Pray the Lord, God is good, and we always say all the time, and all the time God is good. This is another episode, and it is the one that's winding up Moses, the friend of God, because a friend that God spoke to face to face, and the man that asked God a few things, and he came face to face, and he wanted to see Actually, exactly, but God just provided a way to look at him in a crack somewhere. And a conversation that was as deep as that is what we look for, is what we yearn for as Christians to be deeply in a conversation, in dialogue with God. And the prayer that you make is something similar because you are talking to your friend. So Moses gives us a picture that God is a friend, God can be a friend, and is a friend to all, including individuals, weaklings, I mean the weak ones, the humble ones, the low ones, he can still remain your friend today. And so we continue with this, and I just want to conclude with a few things about Moses. There were moments when Moses could uh, be faced with challenges, of people standing against him, challenging him as a leader. What did Moses do? It's something that I want to, to look at because actually all of us are leaders in one way or another. A father in a home, you're a leader. A mother in a home, you're a leader. Maybe in an organization, maybe in whatever, you're a leader, whatever it is. But Moses, there are moments when he would face a situation of people banding themselves together against him, quarreling with him, shouting at him, complaining bitterly about him and with God. But Moses gives us an excellent picture. He was a good representative of God. So he remains an ambassador that actually gives us a few tips here and there. Now I just want us to open in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verses 3 and 4. And this is what the Bible, the Word of God says. Chapter 16, Numbers, verses 3 and 4. And the Bible says that the people whom Moses was leading came as a group to oppose Moses and Aaron. And they said to them, You have gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly? You can imagine. The man that had led them, the man that had proved before Pharaoh that he was the leader that God had chosen, the man that had proved at the Red Sea with his staff to lead the people across, the ones who are saying that you are setting yourself above God's assembly. Now, when Moses had this, you see people had complained, people had shouted. But this is the example that actually Moses gives us as leaders. That when Moses had this, he fell his face down. Then he spoke to Korah and all his followers. In the morning, the Lord will show who belongs to him and who is holy, and he will make that person come near him. Things like that, pray the Lord. Now, Moses, whatever he did, Challenge coming. He didn't look left, right. He didn't left, look, look anywhere. But what Moses did was he fell face down. And falling face down in the Hebrew culture, prostrating before God. So Moses facing, going on his knees and kneeling down and going down was he was facing Godward. So whatever the challenge can be, so this is one of the greatest lessons that actually we learn, we who are leaders, and in any situation that is opposing, and people coming, burning themselves, sometimes you can be a parent and children against you or wherever they are, but what do you do? Praying, going down on your knees and asking God to give you wisdom. And Moses did that. And he asked them, let God separate, let God put there a, you know, a demarcation, and whatever happened, you read, Numbers chapter 16 and see how God, um, you know, vindicated Moses. And so what would we have done if you are the one 
People are opposing and things like that. So Moses went before the Lord, facing downward. Moses listened to them and went you know, to his knees. He first had to give them a listening ear. Because when they came complaining and shouting that who put you, why should you put yourself above them? Moses listened to them and he carried the burden back to God. So my friends, in our challenges daily, the first thing that we need to do is to carry our burdens to God and relay them before him. And he has a solution in our situations. And this I believe very vividly that God has a solution in our situations. And one other thing that actually we learned about Moses is in his leadership style. And I have read somewhere that leaders, Moses represents leaders that can remain standing for the people. Indeed, he remained standing for the people. And how our leaders need to capture a lesson from the man Moses, standing, remaining standing in whatever situation, but for the people. And Moses, in his leadership style, you know, he was in the wilderness all the time. And someone has written and said, the, your leadership is your wilderness. Your leadership is your wilderness. And your wilderness is your leadership. You know, you can be a leader and remain alone. You can be a leader and you find, you know, whatever it is, but your leadership can be your wilderness and your wilderness can be your leadership. And so leadership is a wilderness. You see, when Moses called uh, this man Moses, when God called this man Moses, um, he first had to send him into the wilderness. You see, the man had grown up in the palace. The Bible talks about him as a prince because of the, when the Pharaoh's daughter picked him, took him and he raised him in, you know, in that, you know, uh, that nice, you know, that affluent, affluence, rich, the environment was kingly as a prince in the, in, 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 in the palace. But when God called him, he had to send him to the wilderness. You know, this is where he was for many years. It is when the call came, came to him in the burning bush. He was in the, in the wilderness. He met, I mean, he was looking after his father-in-law's sheep over there and climbing hills and stones and, you know, valleys. And this is where God called him. And so Moses was first in the wilderness as a preparatory ground. And so, all of us actually are meant to be prepared for leadership. And um, the world can prepare us. Institutions can prepare us. Colleges can prepare us. But the God preparation is the most important. Now, God does prepare Moses because he knew where he was going. Let me tell you that even your marriage, you need preparation. Psychologically prepared, physically prepared, economically prepared, emotionally prepared, whatever it is, intellectually prepared to handle the husband that God is going to give you to him, handle the wife that God is going to give you. It needs preparation. So leadership, you are a leader. You, I mean, God needs to prepare you even in the marriage area. How about becoming a parent? You need to be prepared. I mean, the child is coming. Daddy and mommy, you have never, you have never been a father, and so you need to be, you need to be ready for the parent role. And so all of us, I'm bringing this father, mother preparation for the baby, for the children, because it is all preparation, and it's a leadership role. I'm talking about leadership in, you know, you are of a group of people, maybe in the church or at, on, at, on, at, at an organization, whatever. It's all preparation. So Moses was prepared and his wilderness was, I mean, his leadership was in the wilderness and he went and God did that for him. And so friends, Moses was, is one of the examples that we take in here. How about Abraham? Anyway, when you go back earlier, the man was also a desert man, and he was prepared. He had a wilderness of barrenness, of course, and it was preparatory, and the child came. How about, um, you know, Jacob also moved, 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 and the movement were so in the wilderness. And how about, you know, how about Joseph? Well, his brothers, I mean, he went looking for his brothers. His father said to him, go and look for your brothers. And he kept asking him, have you seen my brothers? In the wilderness. And he was actually preparing him for the life that was ahead. And we have talked about Moses, we have talked about Joshua, I mean Joseph earlier, and you know you have seen what it were, what he went through. But he was also a man of the wilderness and it was preparatory. And also how about David, David the man, 
You know, the man after God's own heart, so they say the word of God. David, the man after God's own heart. He was also a desert man. And of course, actually, when, they were, when someone was looking for the leader, the Bible says that actually he was not even with them. He was over there with the sheep. And this is the thing, that actually God prepares us. Like he did prepare, for, prepare Moses for his leadership roles. And so the wilderness will always be there. The desert will be there, will always be there. So be encouraged as a leader. Daddy, mommy, be encouraged. Now, my brother, my sister, whoever they are, whoever you are, be encouraged. Actually, this, this is a wilderness. It's a wilderness of some sort. But Moses remained calm and he was following instructions. Of course, actually, I will not forget to mention that he had his own challenges. He had his own one, two, three weaknesses, but he remained focused. I mean, his desert was actually leading. I mean, uh, t- teaching him lots of things. And remember, 40 years in the wilderness, not settling down, not sitting down. And doesn't know why his father-in-law encouraged him that I gotta have assistance because it can be a desert and you can be lonely when you're up there. And so you need somebody to stand with you. You need somebody to, to speak to you. And so Moses had a people that were close to him. And so don't die alone, have somebody, have a network of some people that will encourage you, that will talk to you in your wilderness. And may God bless you as you do that. So finally, we have talked about Moses, really the man, and we have today, at this time, we have seen, I mean, how he handled the people that were opposed to him. But he, we have also said that he, repre- he represents leaders that stand for their people, and the leaders in our generation need to stand for the people. Parents need to stand for their children, and children, you need to stand for your, for your parents when they are in their weak points, when they are elderly and they are not able. And everyone, church leaders, whoever they are, we need to stand for the people. And so Moses gives us this very, very critical points that I have. I have talked about them, but this is summarily because we have to finish the, 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 the episode. One, that we need to have a close personal relationship with God, which is actually intimate. And Moses did because actually God spoke him to him face to face. And so will you develop your prayer time, your prayer moments, and so that you will be having a relationship that is close to God and that God will see you through whatever challenges. It may take time, but his timing is the best. And so we need to have our face-to-face interaction with God. And also, finally, I mean, summarily, that, I, that I'm giving you, that Moses was an excellent representation of God, and he was ever there. And he was a representative of God and for God. Remember that there are people who can be your representative. You send them to be your representative, but they're not for you. But Moses was both. He was a representative of God and he was for God because whatever he spoke, he was actually doing everything for God. And so we pray for, I pray with you that God will still use you. And those of you that are sent to be representatives of others, be the representative, but also be for them. Speak the same language. And so that, okay, when you are speaking the same language with the one who sent you, it is actually very, very, you know, the message is delivered even by action, because people will see you. And so we need even here of, for God, we need to be here representatives of God and for God. It hurts me to hear people going about, you know, they, are, they stand to be saying that they are for God, that they are representative of God, but they are not for God, because their actions do not show, their words do not show, they, are, you know, they, they, are, they deceive people, they lie to people. God is not a liar. A liar is the devil. And so we need to be presented for God and for God. And Moses did exactly that, and he gives us a, a point of reference. And also, Moses stood in the gap. Standing in the gap as an intercessor. Moses was people's intercessor. And in Exodus chapter 32, he exemplifies this very, very, very much. In Exodus 32 verse 11, there is something actually that happened there. And Moses stood in the gap and pleaded with God on behalf of the people. Now, parents... You are your children's intercessors standing in the gap and leading other people. So we needed to stand in the gap. Moses was. Now God could be moved in prayer and standing and praying for other people and standing as intercessors. God can move many, many things. So my friends, we need to do this really. Moses was in the place and when God was going to destroy them, he said, no, no, God, rather destroy me, but don't kill them. Because the other nations will ask themselves, why did he take them from Egypt? And he pleaded with God, and God 
changes his mind and says, no, 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 okay, for your sake, I'm going. Because God had even promised that actually let me destroy them. They are hard-hearted people. Let me destroy them so that I make your name. So that you become the one. But the mother pleaded with God and said, God, no. People will laugh at you. People will ask questions. So God is a God of another chance. Praise the Lord. He gave them another chance because there was someone who was standing in the gap. So our generation can be looking the way it is. But we need to be to stand in the gap as intercessors. We leaders, we pastors, we bishops, we whoever. God, that God will have, will look at us with mercy. And so that actually whatever he had planned evil to do, he relents and leaves a blessing behind. And this is what the word of God says. And finally, as I said, that these are a few lessons that God will lead us on a daily basis. God will lead us on a daily basis. And day by day, he leads us. And in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4 to 6, that he awakens us day by day. Isaiah 50, verses 4 to 6. So day by day, walk with God. For the 40 years, Moses was walking with God day by day, day by day, evening by evening, night by night, hour by hour, minute by minute, Moses was on the journey, but with God. So God will lead us daily. And I pray that God leads us daily. God leads you daily as a family and as an individual that actually Moses' life is impactful here. And we also have also said that God is the one that fights our battles. He's a, a majestic in the battle. He is a warrior. And David says, I look to the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121, verse 1. So we look up, we look everywhere, but our help, God is our fighter. He the one who fights our battles. Even in our poverty, even in sicknesses, even in whatever, God will remain with you. And may he continue fighting for you and with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so the wilderness experience is preparatory. And so friends, we all have wildernesses. We all have challenging situations. But we pray that God who stood with Moses up to the time that he took him, may he stand with you. May he remain with you. And Moses, in his meekness, in his humility, the Bible has talked about him. And he is also one of those in the hall of faith in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. His, his name is there in the hall of faith. So may we learn that God still stands with us and still calls us to be a people that will be uh, exemplary and leading ourselves, first of all, looking at ourselves and looking at the people that are around us. May God who started this journey in the life, the life of Moses stand with you. For the very many years that Moses led the people, God was with him and he was God's friend. Now you also remain God's friend. Be God's friend, repenting all your sins, confessing them and getting saved day by day. No, put yourself right with him. And may God bless you and watch over you. The God who was with Moses remain with you and may he continue abundantly endowing you with his favor. And this favor will lead us through in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen.